So we've established the false identity, and we've also established that the hero, even though he may not be uh, totally comfortable with his circumstances, he is content with his circumstances. He's not going to do anything to, to ruffle the feathers or, or to rock the boat. He's going to be content there, and we could leave him there for the rest of his life, and we wouldn't have much of a story, but we could do that, and we would be honest to do so. But what happens, what has to happen is the call to adventure. We see this all the time. Some guy shows up from another place, another world, another time, whatever, and says, we need you. You have to come and save the, save the day. Only you can do it. That person, that symbol, represents the, the conscience of the hero. It is the conscience of the hero who knows who the hero truly is, knows their born identity, knows what they were meant to be, and knows that they are out of balance, knows the things that the hero has forgotten or, or doesn't want to uh, face about themselves. And so that call to adventure is necessary. We have to have the conscience rise up. And the hero almost always says no to the call. This is known in story as the reluctant hero. We always have the reluctant hero who says, no, sorry, I can't go slay that dragon, or I can't go uh, whatever it is. And, but we, we're sitting in the audience, we paid our 10 bucks, and we're going, you're going to go. We know you're going to go. I read it in the brochure for the movie. You're going to go, you're going to slay the dragon. I saw the trailer, and you're, when you're doing this, I know you're going to do it. So what's the point? of him saying no. The point is he's being honest. He's being true to himself. He's being true to his DNA. He's being true to his false identity, I should say. It's not really honest, but he's being true to his false identity. In other words, if I go on this quest, it's going to force me to become my born identity or to in some way restore my born identity, which is going to put me right back where I started in this place of fear, this place of trauma. And I've put, that to de- I've put that to death in my life. I don't want that in my life anymore. So the hero says no. They have to. If they say yes, the only thing that you can conclude is that their traumatic event wasn't very strong. It wasn't strong enough to, to have driven their identity uh, south. It wasn't powerful enough to have caused the changes in the hero that are needed for story. So keep that in mind. When you, when you decide to go against the grain and say, I'm just going to have my hero say, yes, well, that's what you're saying, is that their past isn't significant, that their DNA, the DNA of the story is very weak. So we have to have this departure then. What is it that makes the hero go? They don't want to go, so why are they going to go? We know they go. So we have to know why. Again, that question why is what this is all about. We're going to answer the why questions, not the what questions. The plot tells us what the what questions are, tells us what happens. We we want to know why it happens, and that's the purpose of glory of story. So the reason the hero is going to go is because they're going to see that the false identity has consequences. There are consequences to the false identity. It's going to be very obvious to them, something that they were willing to completely um, marginalize and and, and not even focus on, that that their born identity was repressed, has now been brought up front and center by the call to adventure. The call to adventure says, this is who you are. You have to go. You have to do this. There's no one else. And when the hero says no, they are essentially saying, that is not who I am. That is not who I am. And once they sit with that for a moment or two, they're going to realize that's not true. That is who I am. When Let's look at some examples. We'll start with the Knights and Dragons, the departure in Knights and Dragons. In the plot, we see that after the hero has refused the call, he doesn't want to go and rescue the princess. He's just a farmer now, and he's content being a farmer. But right after that scene... We have the hero getting mocked by some passing soldiers who force him to water their horses or something. They force him to do some menial task. And while he's doing that, something rises up in him and he realizes this is not who he is. This is now, had he not had the call to adventure, he might have been perfectly content with watering those the horses and taking that abuse. 
But because the call to adventure came to him and he was asked and told, you are a knight, you're the only knight left in the realm. All, the dragon has killed every other knight and this princess has gone out to try and kill the dragon on her own. You have to save her. There isn't anybody else. So that has been just brought front and center to, to the hero. So now when, they ha when they're mistreated by the soldiers, which may have happened every day prior to that, but now it means something. Now it says, this is not who I am. This is not who I am. It's not, I'm a knight. They can't treat me this way. And so that becomes the departure. That becomes the point where the hero says, if I give in to this now, if I walk away from this now, I am putting my born identity to death. I am putting who I am truly to death. And I'm doing it myself. The hero's not willing to do that. Nobody can do that. It, if our born identity is who we are, as long as we're ignorant of it, we're content. But once it's brought to our face, this is who we are. You can't deal with that any other way but to go towards it. So we see that in uh, the Knights and Dragons. Now we see it in the Patriot also. In the plot, after Mel Gibson refuses to join the resistance and, and he pleads for peace, we see that <clears throat> the British come in, they take over the town, and he stays there, and he's, he kind of tries to become like Switzerland, where his house is right in the middle of the war, but he, he's patching up the wounded of both sides on, at his house. The enemies in, are on the front porch, and the, um, <clears throat> the colonists are on the back porch, the wounded, and so he's trying to be Switzerland. But then along comes this brutal British colonel, who orders all of the enemies killed and captures uh, his son Gabriel, Mel Gibson's son Gabriel, He's going to take him and hang him. And Mel does nothing. He tries to talk him out of it. He tries to be Switzerland. But his son, his other son, tries to rescue his brother and in the process gets himself killed by this brutal colonel right in front of Mel Gibson's eyes. So it is in that moment that Mel Gibson realizes that his peacemaker, passive, uh, false identity is not only powerless, but it's dangerous. And it's just cost him the life of one son. So that becomes the departure for him. And that's how it manifests. 